Hey y'all, have you ever had a fish with external issues? Today I want to talk about potassium permanganate, known to be effective against external fungi, bacteria, and parasites including gill flukes. And it can get quite dangerous if overdosed, but it's very cost-effective chemical that you can easily obtain and use, so potassium permanganate, or PP for short, is a strong oxidizer of organic compounds. And it can be used as a disinfectant and used in wide range of application for drinking water, pond, fish farm, and hear the name quite often in koi and the salmon industry. And it can be strong enough to kill snails, planaria, algae, bacteria, dissolved organic matters in water, and also can kill fish as well. And I've read that it can clear up water, so some people who does the show for their fish use it to clear up their tank for the shows and events. And it can be dangerous when used to treat the fish with external issues because it oxidizes everything in contact, which means if fish has a cut on the skin, it can burn it, and the chemical decreases the dissolved oxygen in the water during the treatment. And I've also heard fish like African cichlids cannot tolerate PP as much as other fish, so it's probably wise to triple check the dosage from multiple sources if you plan to use PP. Now the tools and materials I use for the PP treatment for my discus are PP crystals, hydrogen peroxide to neutralize PP during or after the treatment, and a gram scale that can measure smaller than milligrams, and it has to be accurate because if you mistakenly overdose it, it really can kill your fish a measuring cup to measure hydrogen peroxide, and gloves and goggles just to be careful because you don't want to accidentally burn your eyes or skin, and you are going to need a plastic bottle or glass bottle to mix PP with water, and I avoid letting PP contact the metal surface just in case so that's why I use a glass bottle with plastic cap. So when I did many readings on this chemical, majority of people on various websites say that tank has to be sparkly clean so you won't oxidize organic matters and it won't wear off before it kills parasites or whatever that you're treating. And it's best to treat it in a bare bottom tank with very little organic matters like plants. So before I dose the PP I clean a filter sponge, filter sock which I replace with clean one every single day, wipe all the glass surface, gravel vacuum the planting pot, cleaned inside of all of the plumbing pipes and did a 90% of water change. And this is probably the toughest part of the treatment because it's time consuming, but be very careful when changing water for PP treatment, because if you use water conditioner like Seek and Prime, it will neutralize PP during a treatment so you cannot use that. So the dosage that I followed is a 2 parts per million for at least 4 hours of treatment. And it means 2 mg per 1 liter of water, but will vary depending on the amount of organic matters in your tank. Simon Simply Discus website says that you can add PP up to total of 6 ppm if it wears off during the 4 hours of treatment. And when it wears off, the pinkish or purplish color turns brown or yellowish, which is an indicator that tank has a high organic loads with 2 ppm. And if that happens to me, I would personally stop the treatment without adding more PP and then clean the tank really well and then do another treatment again in a week or so and I'll be afraid to take a chance to kill fish and also don't want to stress them. So one of the tank that I have holds about 104 gallon based on the tank names because it's a 75 gallon tank with 29 gallon sump but it sure doesn't hold that much water so I dose about 90 gallon worth of PP to meet the 2 ppm. And this is critical because I used to dose for 100 gallon worth of 2 ppm and it was too much because some of the discus skin peeled off really bad after the treatment. And they recovered perfectly fine after 2 days or so but I started dosing a bit less which still can maintain a pinkish color for 4 hours. And execution is the exciting part so once I scale the pp I put them in a clean bottle with warm water and shake them really well and then just dump them in a tank slowly and it does look like wine. I set the alarm for 4 hours and I have hydrogen peroxide ready to neutralize during a treatment if any of the fish shows sign of extreme stress. And it's better to observe frequently during a 4 hours treatment. And as I mentioned it's important to monitor the color of the PP in the water and make sure the color stays purplish or pinkish for 4 hours. And as you can see my tank water does turn darker red towards the end of the treatment but never seen a color turns brown or yellow. After 4 hours I neutralize it with hydrogen peroxide and do about 50% of water change. And it's really fun to neutralize it with hydrogen peroxide because as soon as you mix it the pink color disappears right away. And it can be harsh on a fish so I pour them slowly and try to distribute it evenly. 
Here are some of the findings based on my PP treatments. So far, I've only done 5 treatments but valves are still alive but they grow much slower after the treatments. And some of the philodendron that I'm growing on top of the tank did die and they grow much slower now. Now I heard 2 ppm of PP will not affect the well established beneficial bacteria but my experience with it, it does kill the bacteria. So I lost a substantial amount of bacteria so I started seeing some nitrite after the first day of the treatment. And I was expecting this, so I mix seek and prime in a tank when I'm not treating with PP, but I have to perform about 95% water change right before the PP treatment without a prime to make sure nitrite and nitrate both are close to zero so the water won't hurt the fish. Again, prime cannot be mixed with PP treatment, so it's a bit tricky to treat fish with PP while your bacteria is half dead. So I don't recommend treating fish in a separate tank or stop the filtered media during a PP treatment unless you can transfer the fish to clean tank with fishless cycle filter because the filtered media can host the parasites, bacteria and other that you're trying to exterminate. And I wanted to prevent the risk of not killing the parasites hiding in the filter so I chose to use PP on the entire of the tank with filters by taking the risk of wiping all the beneficial bacteria. And I do think it works for gill fluke. So my stanker discus are fine, but my wild green came with a gill flukes, which is known to be almost impossible to get rid of them unless you have a strong strategy. And some people suggest to treat it once a week to reduce the stress to discus, but 2 ppm of PP every 4 days has been working well for my discus so far. Now I heard fluke eggs can go dormant up for 6 months and they cannot be oxidized by PP unless it's with higher concentration that also can kill fish, so it's a scary parasite. Anyway, I will do a separate video in the future about treating gill fluke, so I hope you look forward to it. Now here are some recap of PP treatment. Now be very careful because it can kill your fish and hurt yourself very easily and do lots of research for the particular fish, disease, and or parasites that you're treating. And don't use prime or other water conditioner for PP treatment. Make sure you have all the equipment in hand and prepare to reset your tank. And now overall, I think it's a very cost-effective weapon for your fish tank, but please be careful for your fish, yourself, and try it at your own risk. Thanks for watching this video. I plan to post more videos of other tanks, and I plan to post a separate video on gill fluke with PP treatment which is a hot topic in discus, koi, and many other fish so I hope you look forward to it. See you all soon!